scaling the summit of Ben McDewey has ever had a sublime and solemn effect. It's so wild, so solitary. Elevated from the canopy of Rothiemurka's forest far below and its constantly chattering squirrels. The base satisfaction of climbing over the most ancient rocks on earth, the land underneath firmly felt as truly primordial, it is only matched by the awe of the view earned. The sun has burnt away any stray clouds, leaving as clear a day as I have ever seen. The vista of arcane peaks and valleys stretching out beyond my sight. Despite the season of early autumn, the air remains crisp and the near constant wind snaps with an invigorating bite. No doubt chilled by the many patches of snow that have collected in the countless cracks. The deep pool of Loch Etchikan glints icily to the east. As I continue to descend back to civilization, mist is swirling in the Larigru Pass below, enveloping the mountain. I know the path well, but it is long and I should hurry. The mist had soon covered everything. Each step down seemed to deepen the atmosphere until it became overbearing, almost oppressive. An endless grey, carried by the wind which had become fierce and bitter, howling as it whisked amongst the boulders. Despite the noise, I soon heard the other footfalls. Both an eerie crunch and a huge dull thud. Something was walking after me, but taking steps three or four times the length of my own. I stopped, unable to breathe as I listened. Nothing. Slowly, fearfully, I looked back. Nothing. With a sharp returning breath, I burst forth, striding at a brisk, unwise pace. The other steps returned, quicker, louder. Seized with terror, I ran. The steps closed in, now echoing as they struck the earth. The mist ahead became suddenly bright and, given hope, I spun around with a shout. It was right there. A strange, looming shape, gigantic in size, but its misshapen form was simply wrong. I remembered the tale of the Brocken Spectre. Merely your own shadow projected into the mist. I haltingly removed my hat, but instead of mimicking this, it leaned into me at the queerest of angles. I was caught by two open voids where eyes were not. Those blackest of pits gave way to an assault of limitless possibilities. Dimly aware that I had fallen back onto my arse, the barrage of novel psychedelia and geometric shapes propelled my becoming one with the mountain beneath me. Where the stone began, 
and the man ended seemed inconceivable. And then, somehow, I knew that connections were being made between paths I recognised treading on. The remnants of old dreams were being explored without me. It was more than I could bear. I tore back to myself, screaming from the ground, and sprinted weightless into the light. That is what I recall. I awoke just now, inside what I recognise as the shelter stone, the toppled monolith sanctuary on the banks of Loch Ann, many miles from where I should or even could be. My body is crushed, my mind overwhelmed, my spirit. Although it is the dead of night, the light of the full moon mercifully pierces the entrance, allowing me to conclude this last entry in the journal of a fallen climber. Through the opening, I see the mist envelop the moonlight in one giant step. It is here. There is more to know, much more. I believe him. <laughs>